So I think it's about time I tell you guys about the worst hostel experience that I have ever had. And it was actually the very first hostel that I ever stayed in. <laughs> so I'm going to Florence, Italy. I want to save some money, so I book a hostel. I arrive there after dark. It takes me about an hour to find where the hostel should be. Turns out there's no goddamn hostel there. I just instead run into a group of drunk off their asses American sorority girls. They're there looking to get laid by some greasy Italian. Great. <laughs> so they are no help to me. So as I'm trying to find the hostel, I realize it's located inside of an apartment building. Okay, no signs for it. Just a normal, regular building. As I ring the bell after 15, 20, 30 minutes, no one answers. No one lets me in. Nothing. <laughs> So, when uh, some guy finally comes out after I'm dodging all of the drunken retards, catch the door before it closes and get into the building. Dark, stairs look like they're 500 years old. It basically just looked like I stepped onto the set of the movie Hostel. Nice. <laughs> so I make it up to where the hostel should be and it's just a giant steel door that looks like it's locked from the outside to keep prisoners inside. Lovely. Bang on the door. Okay, someone opens it. All right, good, progress. <laughs> Who are you? Who are you? He just cracks the door open. <laughs> uh, here to check into the hostel? Is this a hostel? What? Come in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I come in, steel door just creaks open. There's this little Indian dude in a sport jacket who calls himself Mike Tyson. Okay, great, so I've just stepped into the Indian version of Mike Tyson's apartment in Italy. After dark, and I can't find any other accommodations. I'm considerably freaked out at this point. <laughs> so, <clears throat> he can't find my reservation, and wants me to look for it on his computer in the common room. On the way to the common room, I notice that paint is peeling on every single wall. The, all the doors are open, there are no locks. There are creepy dudes walking around with tattoos that are building walls. And the dudes look like they just got out of prison, which I later found out they look like that for a reason, because they did just get out of prison. And he has me sit down in the common room, which has a stack of mattresses 10 feet high, all of which looked like someone had previously died on them. <laughs> and it basically looks like there's a whore in the corner smoking out of the window. Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> so at this point, I pretty much just think, no matter what happens, uh, Mike Tyson's gonna kill me, and these prison dudes are going to chop me up to little pieces and put me into the wall. Awesome. So as I'm logging onto the computer to show him a reservation that I made <laughs> at his place, which he didn't know about, yeah, I see this petite little blonde girl walk by. And, you know, she seems nice enough, and I hear her speaking to someone in a Canadian or an American accent. And it was at that point when I realized <sighs> I'm safe. Because if anyone's going to get chopped up and put into the wall, it's definitely going to be her and not me. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I check in, and he shows me into the room. There are two rooms, no locks on the doors. Doors don't even shut, no lockers. No sheets on the bed, no pillowcases for the pillows. <laughs> Nothing. It's basically like I'm in a prison dorm room. Oh, it's just horrible. The bathroom's so dirty that I just didn't even touch anything, and the doors didn't shut on them either. So, I'm afraid to use the bathrooms, I'm afraid to sleep, I'm afraid Mike Tyson's gonna chop me up into little tiny pieces, and then he decides to throw a sangria party to get all of the girls with, let's say, large flotation devices drunk. And he calls it sangria, I guess, because he figures any red liquid with alcohol in it should be called sangria. Whatever, we all get tipsy, go out, have a good night, and come back. As I'm Sitting on my hostel bed, I realized there is no way I'm gonna let any of this touch my skin. I sleep fully clothed, jeans, shirt, sweatshirt, shoes, socks, everything on top of everything. I'm not letting that shit touch my skin. And as I'm trying to go to sleep, there are two monsters snoring. Monsters. And I figure it's some 500 pound dude. Wake up the next morning and it's two tiny little 18 year old girls just snoring like you couldn't believe. <laughs> oh my gosh. That uh, experience went on for two days. So afraid to use the bathrooms, afraid to sleep, afraid to be in the apartment. Oh yeah, 
Turns out Mike Tyson actually did live there, and so did those prison dudes. So everyone slept in the same apartment every night. It was horribly terrifying. <laughs> and you were kicked out between 10 a.m. and 2 or 3 p.m. So even though you couldn't sleep because the monsters were snoring, you gotta go out in the city. It was literally the worst hostile experience I have ever had up to now. And now I've probably been in, I don't know, 50 or 100 different hostels. <laughs> but the funny thing is, that hostel is the reason that I decided to travel abroad alone. Because I realized that it doesn't matter how shitty the accommodation is, it, it, what matters is the people that you meet. And there I met some really awesome people that I'm still in contact with, and it just made the experience worth it. So even though we were all in a horrible place, and we all pretty much thought we were going to die there, <laughs> we kind of had each other to rely upon and go out and see everything and do everything cool in the city together. So though it was the worst hostel, it was also the reason that I am now where I am today. Wait, don't go just yet. Make sure to hit that big subscribe button below so you can follow the journey. Tell me what you think about the video in the comments, and if you liked it, hit the like button and give me a thumbs up.